Hi there, Serial Trader here. Let's check in with the major US indices and starting with SPX. So another uh, fairly volatile intraday session. And uh, it was looking quite bearish. Uh, and you know, let me just put on this 10 minute chart to start off with. And uh, okay, so right here where this gap is, that's where today's session opened. And then it uh, declined fairly persistently until um, it reached its bottom here. Uh, all right around the midway point, we'll say, through the uh, session, give or take. And then it just trended up quite strongly thereafter, closed the gap from the opening, pulled back a little bit, and then just went even stronger into the close. So that's interesting. Uh, certainly good for uh, intraday trading. Uh, okay, let's go back to the daily. See how this really fits into the uh, big picture. And really, so I was mentioning that this support level was important to hold uh, to maintain a, a bullish outcome. And that level was 26.12.67. And uh, that stayed intact. And we actually uh, ended up closing the day quite strongly, as I pointed out in the intraday chart. And we have this long lower shadow, another hammer style, uh, you know, bullish candlestick. But really, uh, nothing truly happened to, to change the overall outlook to be, you know, more confidently bearish or bullish. Uh, until we actually take out this low or take out that high from last week. We're still really just stuck in this range. And despite having some intraday volatility, which is certainly nice for uh, short-term trading, there, there's still nothing to confidently say, oh, you know, we should be going long for a you know, position trade or going short for position trade. So I'll, from, from that sort of perspective, I'm still waiting before I put on any kind of uh, large position that has a big directional bias to it. And just to quickly check in with the Elliott Wave counts, so again, this uh, chart that would have us going down in a strong wave three of three, the downside, still possible. Nothing's been invalidated yet. And again, this triangle chart that would have us uh, going up in a strong move up to new all-time highs. That's also not been invalidated. So big picture, nothing's changed. And uh, until one of those two levels breaks, uh, I'm not going to entertain that. It has changed either so it's still just a waiting game for a bigger picture trade all right that's good for SPX and we're still below the T line I'll mention as well so let's go with the Dow Jones industrial average as that has been a little different in the last couple days here okay so the Dow actually did take out its equivalent uh, support levels and uh, not by much, but intraday it took them out. Uh, but I think I mentioned yesterday that that wouldn't be good enough for me to have one index, especially the Dow, uh, take out those levels to initiate a bearish position. I want to see all three index indexes confirm uh, to have more confidence. And uh, this was a good example of that. So yeah, the Dow slightly took out those lows, but then had a big intraday, you know, bullish reversal candlestick, just like the others did. Um, but importantly, SPX, and I'll get to the NASDAQ, but the NASDAQ also uh, came nowhere near taking out those support levels, which made me ignore this bearish break of support on the Dow. Didn't have as much meaning because of those other two indices. So, and again, the Dow is still below the T-line, but really not much going on here. Still range bound as far as I'm concerned. And the Dow uh, did not appear to be a leader to the downside. In fact, it just appeared to be a, a non-confirmation, uh, you know, false breakout sort of deal. False breakout of the downside. So let's go to the NASDAQ. Okay. So the NASDAQ actually had, uh, I would say, the strongest uh, day today compared to the other two indices. So that's largely because of uh, tech having such strength. And... Uh, so the Dow, it opened a little lower uh, than yesterday's close, although not 
substantially and it didn't go that much lower intraday and then it had quite a strong up day today and actually closed above the t-line uh, so that's worth noting so perhaps tech will be the leader here that brings the rest of the market up with it we shall see uh, and as you see the nasdaq support level that would have been equivalent to the down the s and p's uh i mean we've got nowhere near that so tech certainly looks like uh at least short term here to be the the leader and okay that's good for the nasdaq let's go to the vix and the VIX, uh, still nothing going on here. And as long as the VIX remains uh, calm like this, stocks can certainly rise without too much issue. So nothing uh, remarkable there on the VIX. Yeah, you see there. In fact, VIX even tried to have a little bit of a spike today, but then quickly got rejected as the uh, intraday reversal on the indices played out. Okay, and let's talk about Apple. Uh, and there's good reason to talk about it. And I'll talk about what I did with it as well uh, in a bit here. So Apple, yesterday I pointed out this uh, bullish engulfing candlestick that engulfed uh, three prior real bodies, okay? So the three prior sessions. And then uh, that implied the next three to five candlesticks, once confirmed, would be in that direction. Well, so far we have uh, one good confirming candlestick today. And Apple got bought up strongly into earnings. And then uh, now earnings have been quite positive, or at least after hours action would have you uh, believe that it's quite positive. So if that maintains into tomorrow, then Apple could really uh, start a good run here. This might just be the kickoff of a, you know another wave up to new highs. We'll see. And let me just go down the 10 minute and just show you the after hours uh, price action. Okay. And as you can see, Apple gained substantially after hours. So... This candlestick, here, let me just get in real close here. So this candlestick was the last candle of the regular session. And then after hours, it took, uh, oh, about half an hour before earnings came out. And then earnings came out, boom, had a big move up. One is high so far is 178. That's a huge move. And then pulled back, I, although it just pulled back to around the T-line, interestingly enough, even after hours, T-line still, still means something. And then we've kind of uh, come back up. And just looks like a nice healthy sideways consolidation after that big spike up. So tomorrow, uh, if, if these gains hold or uh, even accelerate, expect some big moves on Apple. Uh, well, right now it's closed after hours, right around 175.29 by the looks of it. Go back to this daily. So that's interesting. And obviously Apple's well above the T-line now. So that's a positive development. Also well above the 200-day moving average. So that may have been a nice bullish launch. Obviously, volume is relatively higher today than it has been in a while. And that's not surprising. A lot of people obviously making moves before earnings. So let's get into what I did. Okay, so AAPL. Okay, this is what I did. And I bought a uh, strangle, technically. So I bought 10 Apple... July 20th, 170 puts, and I bought 10 Apple, uh, July 20th, 165 calls, and I paid 885 for the calls and 825 for the puts. So the, the net debit uh, as a strangle was uh, 1710, okay? And uh, it may sound like a lot, but keep in mind $5 of that uh, is actually intrinsic value, roughly $5 worth. So the purple line shows us where we are. And actually, let me adjust the dates. Okay, so tomorrow, which is when Apple will actually trade after its earnings here. Uh, that's May 2nd. So I got the date is May 2nd. And this shows our upside break even point. So if Apple trades uh, above 174, uh, the trade will be profitable. And then, okay, just an example of how profitable. Say we go up to the after hours high so far of 178, that should be a nice $2,500 uh, profit or so. And to the downside, uh, anything below 157 will be profitable. And let's say we went to uh, 152 or 151, which is right around the uh, February lows of Apple. That'd be you know, around $4,000. Now that's not likely to happen. We're much more likely to see the upside uh, scenario play out tomorrow. 
Now the teal line shows you at expiration, which is a long time from now in comparison. So uh, July 20th, that's uh, you know almost three months down the road. Downside break even point is uh, oh, 152 and change, not quite 153. Upside break even point is 182.07. So you can see why that was a lot more attractive than buying an $8 straddle uh, roughly that only uh, expires at the end of this week. You really would have had to see something happen um, quickly, whereas opposed to this $17 strangle, of, of which $5 is intrinsic, keep in mind. Uh, and remember the $8 straddle, $0 of that was intrinsic if it was at the money, which it was. So your, your chances of making money and the length of time that you can potentially uh, wait to make money, again, both greatly higher in this strangle scenario. So I expect to be able to close this tomorrow uh, for a reasonable profit, as long as Apple holds onto its gains or even adds to them perhaps from the after hour session. And we shall see. And if it pulls back a bit uh, or even starts heading down, I, I don't have to be in a panic because I've got all kinds of time. Say it does want to go down and make new lows instead. I mean, I've got uh, almost three months for that to happen. So that's why I picked the strangle. Uh, basically trying to take advantage of the short-term money to be made on a earnings release. But if that doesn't work out, you still have a lot of uh, time for it to do something else in your favor. Whereas with the uh, short-term straddle, that, that wouldn't have been the case. So I'll uh, I'll be optimistic that tomorrow I can close, close out a good trade on Apple here with this strangle. Uh, but if not, you know, not the end of the world. And it certainly won't necessarily mean that I have to take a loss on it. Anyway, that should be good for today. Uh, probably check in again tomorrow after uh, Apple does its thing and see how the markets are playing out. Serial Trader signing off.